and anyone that's tuning in right now from the comfort of your own home. Andrew Foster here. Just letting you know, church is going to be starting off in five minutes. So your five-minute countdown will be coming up on the screen uh, so you and your family can get ready for what's going to be an amazing service today. Hope you're excited. Things are going to be a little different, but super fun, super anointed. So just keep an eye out as we keep going. All right, everyone, if you're just tuning in, this is to let you know that in two minutes, service will be starting. So get comfortable, grab your coffee, put on your robe, however you're doing church this morning, uh, and just be excited and ready because we're going to have an amazing, amazing worship service. Also want to encourage you right now, for those of you who are at home, we do love seeing your pictures of what your Sunday morning looks like. And I'll say this again later, but snap a picture of what you and your family are doing for church this morning. Bless you.
Good morning, Life Church. If you're just tuning in, thank you for joining us this morning. I hope you're excited for an amazing Sunday. Um, I'm going to open up this morning by reading a verse for all of you. If you got your Bibles with you or your phones, whatever you're using at home, open them up to Psalms 138. And I was reading the psalm this week, and I'm going to be in verse 2 to 3, and this kind of really stuck out to me. And it says, I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. What an amazing promise right there. That as soon as we pray, he answers us. That he gives us strength. I want to open up this morning just by praying over you and your families. Over just praying over our city and our nation right now. And just knowing that when we pray... He answers us and strength is released. So if you would just bow your heads with me right now, Holy Spirit, we just call on you right now. Father God, we ask right now for just your presence to be poured out in people's homes this morning. Father, to be poured out across our nation this morning. As people gather together to worship you in their houses, Father, that there would be just a release of your presence in neighborhoods, Father, in cities, and in nations all across the world. God, we release strength right now for those who are at home. We release strength right now, Father, for those who feel tired and who feel weak. Yeah, we praise you, Jesus, and we love you. In your name, amen. Awesome. So we're going to go to the worship team right now. And all the earth will 
shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Is your breath in our lungs? So we pour out our praise, pour out. bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you this morning. I, I just uh, I declare peace and joy over you and your household because, you know, that's, that's the provision that the Lord has given us and we shouldn't take that lightly. You know, I, I think it's so easy, so easy to let the world set the tone and get bogged down in worry and fear and anxiety. But the Lord, he wants to he wants to raise up his church to shine in the darkness. And if this isn't darkness, I don't know what is. So I would just say, let the Lord, let the Lord affect you. Let him affect you in a way where you know his joy and you know his peace because we believe what he says.
rise up against the song all sides. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Sing that again. Though the battle rages, we will stand in the fight. Though the armies rise up against the song all sides.
never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gon
your love is better than life. You fear not death. You fear not the enemy and these schemes that come against us.
faithful saints, fresh courage take in clouds is so much dread. I'll be with mercy and shall pray in blessings and in blessings, in blessings all. What a great song to end on. I'm actually going to have us sing just that chorus again because I just feel like there's an anointing on that right now. Just for all of us, just in the season that we're in, um, I think God just wants to release fresh courage, that he just wants to release kind of that strength we talked about at the beginning of service here. The song kind of made me think of uh, Deuteronomy 31, and it says, be strong and of good courage. I'm going to say it again. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them for the Lord your God he is the one who goes with you he will not leave you nor forsake you come on I want to encourage you right now that if you have been struggling in this season with feeling forsaken or forgotten if you've been struggling with having courage for where God is taking you and how things are changing right now I think God just wants to release right now just a fresh anointing a fresh uh, revelation of his courage that you would know that he is the one that goes with you that he goes before you, that he makes your path straight, and that he is leading you towards where you need to be. And there's going to be courage that's going to be released because of that. So I'm going to pray, and then after I'm done praying, I'm going to ask the worship team to go into the chorus on this again. But those of you right now in your homes, wherever you're at, I want you to put your hand on your heart right now. And I want you just to say, give me courage, God. Release your courage on me right now. And Holy Spirit, we just release right now, Father, just a refilling, God, just a refreshment of your courage. Lord, that we do not need to be afraid because you are with us and you go with us. Father God, that you walk with us, that you direct our paths. So for anyone right now, Father, who is afraid, we just speak and release courage into your life. We release courage over your family right now. We release courage over you when it comes to your job, when it comes to your finances, that you would have the courage and the strength to know that God is going with you and before you. And we just say right now that the clouds are breaking. Come on, I, I think there's something on that right now. I want you to declare that over your house right now, that the clouds are breaking. Declare that over our nation right now, God. We declare the clouds are breaking, Father God. Lord, that right now things are shifting. God, the clouds are breaking, Father. There is a turning point right now. We just release your presence, Jesus. Yeah, come on. We're going to sing this again. And I really want you to just kind of declare it over yourself. Ye faithful saints, fresh courage take. In clouds is so much dread. Our big mercy and shall break. Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take in clouds is so much dread I'll be with mercy God, we just thank you for that right now. We thank you that we can rest in your courage, Father. That we can have faith in the fact that you are a good God who goes with us. So right now, we choose to stand upon that truth. Father God, we choose to declare that truth over our families. Father, that you go with us so we have nothing to fear. And we say, courage, just rise up in me. Rise up right now. Yeah, in your name, amen. Awesome. Thank you so much, worship team. Those of you who are at home, give them a virtual clap, throw a virtual shoe. 
I know some of you know how to do it, so let them know that you love them. They did great. Um, I just want to thank everyone right now who's watching. Welcome to Life Church. We are so happy you're here, whether you're someone who's local or whether you're someone who's far away. We're happy that you were able to tune in today. My name is Andrew Foster. I'm the associate pastor here. And we have a really fun and unique Sunday plan for you. It's going to be great. But before I get into that, I want to encourage you right now. We love seeing your pictures of what Sunday mornings look like in your house during this time of lockdown. So take a picture with your family. Uh, tag the church in it. Tag yourselves in it. Post it. Let us see how you guys are doing family, how you're doing community right now where you're at. It's really encouraging. We'd love to look at all of them. Use Facebook, Instagram, whatever you use for your uh, social media. And I um, also want to remind you right now that uh, you are still able to give. So I'm gonna, basically, we're gonna, I'm going to pray over the offering here in a second. But just want to remind you that you can go online to do it. You can also mail in checks to our P.O. Box at 5350. Um, you can text to give now. We have that available. And all those details are on our website, lifechurchsalem.com. So you can go check all that out. You're encouraged to do so. But today is actually going to be a fun day because it's going to be a Mission Sunday for us today. And so it's something that we do every year where we highlight all of our missionaries and do all these things. And so we're going to do it a little different today because obviously we're limited to how many people we can have gather in a place. But uh, Crystal, give, uh, sorry, RC, oof, oh my Lord, I keep doing that. Crystal RC, I caught myself though last minute, is uh, actually going to be sharing today because she is our outreach pastor. She works with a lot of these missionaries who are local, but also keeps in contact with those who are overseas. So we're going to watch the video announcements. And then once those are done, she's going to be up here and kind of explain to you what Sunday is going to look like today. So here are the video announcements. Welcome to Mission Sunday, everyone. Today, after the announcements, you're going to hear from our local and foreign missionaries about their lives, how they've been impacted lately, and all of the amazing things that they're still doing. With that said, we have a lot of amazing people here that are also doing good all around us. For example, a few younger couples have reached out to some elderly singles in need. They've bought them groceries and just made sure that they feel seen. One of our seasoned ladies has been calling and checking in on those in her complex that she knows are alone to make sure that they are taken care of and okay. There's a story about someone here who knew that their neighbor was a high school senior, and they went out of their way to buy them a card and gift them $50 to celebrate a big accomplishment that unfortunately won't be getting the recognition that it deserves during this time. One of our biggest outreaches is our food and clothing bank. We receive food from Marion Polk Food Share, but many of you might not know that we as Life Church also support the food share on its own. We got a note in the mail from them that we would love to share with everyone. Life Church has been a part of the monthly sustainer circle for Marion Polk Food Share since April of 2013, so for seven years. On behalf of all of us at the food share, thank you. Because of you, kids still receive meals even though schools are closed. Emergency food supplies are available for those in need, and homebound seniors are delivered fresh meals and smiles. Thank you for making our community a great place to live. There is a new opportunity to serve in this amazing ministry within the clothing bank side of things. Teresa Kephart has been an incredible leader for the last 13 years, running, organizing, and making this ministry a wonderful experience for people who are in need of clothes. She is moving on to other things, and we are looking for a new team leader. Please call or email us if you're interested. Be sure to email life at lifechurchsalem.com. Thank you, Teresa, for your 13 years of serving our community. You have been nothing short of amazing. Lastly, over the last few weeks, Life Church and Salem Dream Center have received multiple checks of $1,200 and more, which we know are most likely from people's stimulus checks. What a wonderful way to show love and be a huge help during these crazy times. Thank you, Life Church family, for your continued support to expand the kingdom. We are so, so thankful.
Hello, Life Church family. I'm Crystal RC. I am the outreach pastor, as Andrew mentioned. And I first wanted to say how much I miss you all. It is so different being in this auditorium with a bunch of empty seats. And it just made me realize this morning how much that this is not a building, that this is not just a bunch of walls, that is this is truly a united family that we are all a part of. So even as you're sitting home right now, I know that we are connected in spirit and that we are the body of Christ. And it's so awesome hearing those testimonies of what people are doing around town, that that church hasn't stopped, that we are moving forward. And I um, just want to welcome you today to our second annual missions fair. Looks quite different today. So uh, I don't know if some of you were here last year. We had different stations set up around the back. We had uh, different missionaries share uh, local and overseas. Uh, be, you were able to pick up pamphlets from each of them. And today's not quite like that, um, but we still wanted you to welcome to join into our missions fair today. And you'll get to hear from different uh, ministries that we are continuing to support and what they're doing with all of what's going on right now. So first of all, I just wanted to um, talk about what's in-house. You heard from our announcements that Life Essentials Food and Clothing Bank is still continuing to happen. In fact, we've nearly doubled in size of the amount of people that have come through, not our doors, but drive, driven through to uh, get food. The clothing has been happening once a month to allow in a couple people at a time. So we've gone from about 20, 20 to 30 people on an average time we're open to now we're around like 35 to 50 families every time we're open. So we've really increased, the need has increased, um, but what a cool opportunity it has been to meet new people and just them, uh, talking to some of them yesterday, they're like, this is my favorite part of the, the month or the week. And they're like, they just love coming and, and seeing us and um, being a part of it. So another couple things, I, I put out a, a message on the uh, Life Church community group on Facebook saying if you could make some cards, I would pass them out or get them to a, a nursing home. And a couple of you did that. And thank you so much because it's fun to be able to reach other places where specifically where we know that they uh, can't get out right now. And then um, we've also had our children's pastor, Leah, was, has been making those kids packets for families so that kids could still be a part of having Sunday school in their home. Along with that, we did the Easter baskets a few weeks ago for families. And so we've just, we've been busy trying to find different ways, getting creative of how can we continue to serve our church family, our neighbors, our, the Salem area. So today we get to hear from a couple different amazing ministries uh, that we support. Uh, we're going to hear from the Polyakovs. So Nikolai and Tatiana Polyakov, they are our uh, Russian min uh, missionaries, and they normally travel several times a year. In fact, I know Nikolai had a couple different flights planned even in the last, in these, these few months that had to be canceled. But he uh, is going to share about how they're continuing their ministry there. Some of what they normally are able to do is teaching the leaders, supporting growing Bible studies there, um, helping out with the pastors, and, and then even around town, they, they uh, help with Salem refugees, uh, they lead prayer groups. Uh, so they are just amazing people that are just constantly seeking for uh, people, how they can know Christ. So we're going to hear from Nikolai right now. Thank you so much, Nikolai, for being here today. We are excited to hear from you, how things are going. Uh, first off, I just want to check in about you personally, your family, you and Tatiana, your kids. Like, how are things going in life with everything that's happening around us for you? Well, thank you for having me here. We're doing good and um, changing some things. Like, we cannot travel like we used to travel for... Our kids, they do in the, our boys, they do in the school and on internet. Mm -hmm. And um, most important, we are not down. We know that Jesus on the throne, and we're excited about that. Yeah, amen. 
He's good. He Amen. takes good care Amen. of us, doesn't he? How does this affect your ministry right now? You have ministry, obviously, in Russia, but then around here. And how is this directly affecting what's going on with your ministry right now? Well, it's changed some plans that have been planned. Like in the middle of May, March, John Carney and I were supposed to go to Ghana. Everything was planned. It's canceled. Then uh, in the end of uh, April, I had to go to Moscow to have a conference. It's canceled. And then we have to go to Kamchatka. It's canceled as ah, well. That's a lot of cancellations. <laughs> that's a lot of, yeah. But, you know, we've been praying, God, how we, what we can do. Yeah. How we can, you know, when, when we see reality, I think it's important to every person. When you see reality, what are you going to do? Either you can get upset or you can just pray and find another way how you can do what God wants you to do. This was in our case. This is what we did. We started to use uh, Zoom and TimeFace and Skype and all other WhatsApp and other different uh, like media, social media. Then we can do the same what we want to do, preaching, teaching. And uh, we actually doing like our meetings with our leaders. We're doing... Um, uh, on uh, WhatsApp, different people sit in different places. Actually, it's like they sit in there in Russia, we sit in here in the U.S., and we just keep doing our meetings, praying and planning what we need to do, and then teaching as well, and uh, also using the Zoom and other stuff uh, like WhatsApp. And but also we're doing Bible study involved with different people groups. But it's a very unique thing that we can use now, like Zoom. Zoom, it's amazing. Right. We also involved not only in uh, Kamchatka ministry, but another ministry, it's Family, uh, Family International. And it's a ministry all over the world. And last Saturday, we had a global prayer with the people, about 100 people connected to Zoom. And we had uh, uh, Craig Hill, he was sharing the word, and then we were praying and then it's unique on um, Zoom. You can make like small groups and um, 18 small groups were divided. Wow. And people actually from all over the world. Oh, that's so cool. We're sitting with a group of people from um, Africa, some from other places. We've been talking what God is doing. And also one of the things we were using prayer in YWAM, it's very encouraged to pray. Instead of just praying, just before you pray, just sit and listen and ask God what God wants you to pray about. Yeah. Because very often we just come and just tell God what we feel. But it's good to hear what God wants. And we had this prayer. We're just listening. And then we start to pray. And 40 minutes we prayed in the small, 18 small groups. And then we were connected again. And about 100 people just praying together. People from all over the world. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. This is God is. We just thank God for what. We're using these uh, media things. Right. How internet can connect us all over right, the world right. in an instant. Amen. Amen. How amazing is that? And for anyone that doesn't know, WhatsApp is an app on your phone that you can connect with people internationally and text and video too. Right, yeah, yeah. And that's... Yeah, we did record in here a message uh, for a Russian church and they also right now, they cannot gather together. And um, we recorded here and sent it over there and then that just had a meeting and what they did also they had like home groups and uh, after watching this they home groups discussing your message and then praying together asking for people's needs wow it's becoming very active actually yeah. <laughs> it's growing <laughs> yeah it is it is that's so cool so with all of that what is a big need or maybe there's multiple needs that you have right now with that i mean you're connecting and it sounds like it's going really well but is is there any needs that you have yeah maybe first one it's uh, uh i would appreciate prayers for creativity that people will pray for us that god will give us creative ideas how we can reach out people and bring them to jesus you know yeah. we know one way we just go to people and share or just <laughs> meeting and people coming to the lord but i think god can use different medias how we can reach people to the Lord. It's the first thing. The second uh, need could be uh, right now, we just recently, we started a new, in New Village, we started a church. And we, uh, one couple prayed and they went there to start a church now. 
developing this work. And right now they're in that village, and I would appreciate if people would pray for them because it's not easy with all things what happen, and they're in the village. And we still believe that God can, through them, can reach other people, and people come to the Lord. Yeah. It's uh, the second thing. And also I think maybe it's important, I just wrote down for myself a note. Good. Uh, pray for our leadership in Kamchatka because a lot of challenges right now. And as a leadership, they need to make right decision. And uh, this is what we are spending time together, praying for each other and just asking God's wisdom how to deal in different situations right now with different people, with different challenges. And this is a, like another prayer request. Good. Yeah, absolutely. We want to pray for those things. Amen. Is there ways that people from Life Church um, can give to you guys to support you either financially or is there any kind of materials you need? That what What's a way yeah, to give? This is a, a very interesting time because it's touching every person. Like right now we have some of our supporters. They informed us that the unable to they cannot now support us because they don't have finances and and uh, the best way is you can do it through our church and give it to church and then church give it to us and it's a big blessing thank you so much for those who are praying for us and uh, financially support and it's a big blessing for for our family and for ministry as well absolutely gotta you, you still have trips in the future you still have plans yeah, to do right, more things right. so any of that financially would go straight towards all of right. those future trips and more things that you can do and and that you do around here too right yeah yeah just you know it's interesting uh, when we have um, a difficult situation it's good to pray and, and see how god can give us wisdom how to use situation just give you an example uh, in the, in kamchatka i just talked to recently to one lady a lot of older people they don't have a like uh, internet or something but they want to listen to the messages and this is what this lady she just had creative idea she has an internet she turned on when the church preaching online and then she took her phone called to another older lady who doesn't have internet oh, wow. and she turned on the phone and that <laughs> lady also turned on her phone and that lady just sitting at home without internet just listening to the preaching and worship Wow. And that lady, so isolated, don't have any internet, but Holy Spirit working through this communication to the <laughs> oh, That's beautiful. I love that. I think we need to ask God's wisdom yeah, for creativity. There's more ideas out there. Amen. That's amen. so good. I love it. We got to spread, spread the good news. Right. That's right. so good. Is there any other kinds of uh, prayer needs that you have, prayer that uh, people can be praying about, or awesome testimonies that you want to share? Yeah, I have a, just recently with our guys we talk, and this is a testimony. Uh, one man, he was uh, in the church in a long time ago, and then he backslided and went his own way. When all these things happened, he got so afraid, and the fear came upon him, and all kind of things. He started to think about his life, and because he knew about the Lord, but now he lives totally different life. He just backslided. One of the meetings when men get together, he came and he fell on the floor, was crying and weeping. And he said, I want to come back to the Lord. I want to serve Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it seems like all the circumstances hard right now. But you never know how God can use for his glory. Right. And this man, he was on the floor crying and weeping, asking Jesus forgiveness. And God forgave him. And now he's serving Jesus. And even more, because they said we need to have like home group and we don't have a room or we don't have places. He said, hey, guys, I have an apartment. You can come now and have a co home group in my apartment. And right now, man got saved. And now he has a home group in his apartment. Wow. <laughs> All the same day. <laughs> God, God can do miracles. You know? That's amen. That's so good. Yeah. I know that you are not only a missionary, but also an amazing preacher. Uh, what kind of encouragement can you just give everyone today? You know, I, I was um, just recently reading this uh, Colossians 2 and verse 15. It says here about Jesus. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. You know, when we go through some situations, hard situations, I, need, I think we need to understand there are two kingdoms. God's kingdom and enemy's kingdom. 
And uh, very often people are focused on anime's kingdom and see what anime is doing. Oh, you know, what is going to happen? Some people are waiting for Antichrist to come. Right. I want to tell you, I'm not waiting for him. I'm no. waiting for Jesus. Amen. This is what I'm waiting yeah. for. Come on, that's so good. And Jesus, he disarmed principalities and powers, and he actually triumphed over them. And when, right now, when you sit in your room, you're thinking, God, all these things happen. Think about what Jesus did. He died, but he also was risen again. That's right. And he's alive today. And he wants to reach you. And he actually, he called you, you are my son. You are my daughter. Yeah. He loves you so much. And even more, he said, I never leave you, nor forsake you. He is with you always. That's good. Don't forget, Jesus overcame the enemy. And he always victorious Jesus, and he lives in you. Amen. That's so good. Can you just pray over any person that is feeling alone right now in their home, just that they will feel the presence of God right now? Amen. Father, we just thank you for this time together. Mm -hmm. We just thank you, Jesus, that you overcame the power of the enemy, and you gave us this power. You gave us the Holy Spirit. And I pray for every person right now who is watching this program. I pray, God, if somebody maybe have just a lot of emotional things going in life, I just pray, Jesus, that you touch them right now by the power of the Holy Spirit in their homes yes, where they are right now. Yes, God, I thank you that Jesus brought us life mm -hmm. and life abundant. We can, go, we can go through all these hard times, but we still have joy of the Lord because you are our Savior. Mm -hmm. I pray for every person. Let the power of God will come and bring your life and encourage every person. We just give praise and glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I know that people are blessed just hearing how you are doing, hearing what's going on all over. All right, welcome back. Sorry for that long intermission. Hope you all had a nice little bathroom break there and we are gonna get right back to it. So next up, we have Craig Oviet sharing with us. Craig and Renee, uh, they are the directors of Salem Dream Center. And uh, most of you know them from when they come through in the Christmas time and we do dream tree with them. They, we do sneaky elf and do cookies and but they do so much all through the year, uh, uh, full-time missionaries to our uh, local Salem, Edgewater District in West Salem. They um, have a Saturday program for kids where they give them breakfast and lunch each week, and uh, they do ministry to the families, uh, tutoring kids, making sure they get education. And they have a Nuestra Casa, which is our house in Spanish that has a community garden. Uh, that's where they do a lot of uh, their individual uh, outreach to the, to the uh, families there. They also send kids to camp, summer camp every year. So uh, their heart is just to connect with the individuals, the families, uh, to really provide for the needs of the people and help restore uh, families in, in right here uh, in our own neighborhood. So we're just going to hear from Craig right now of how things are going for him. We have Craig Oviet with us here today, and he's going to be sharing about Salem Dream Center. So Craig, first of all, I just want to check in with you. How are things going with you personally, your family? How, how is all of COVID-19 affecting your household? Well, first of all, our 10-year-old Caleb has fired me daily as his teacher. <laughs> um, so that's going well. Good, good. Yeah, that's going really well. Um, I'm just hoping that he has a new teacher next year. Um, <laughs> I'm yet. sure he is as well. But we're doing good. Um, you know, it's everybody's in a new place. Yeah. You know, we're just doing our best to navigate and to realize we're not the only ones in this boat. Right. And it's stressful at home and... Uh, being a teacher is stressful. We're not used to that. And that's okay. Um, and we're just kind of reminding, meaning Renee and I reminding each other, it's okay to just chill. It's okay to be frustrated, but just let it go. Um, and we're not alone in that. Absolutely. You're, as every other family, I'm sure, can relate right yeah. now. So, yes, thank you for that. And then, obviously, a big part of your life is your ministry to... Uh, the West Salem Edgewater District. How has all this been affected? Well, we um, we haven't 
we're open for business. We didn't slow down. Uh, we paused for just a moment. Um, I've been saying that we shifted gears, and I had a friend yesterday say, no, you just pivoted. <laughs> and so I kind of like that. We just pivoted. Good. And so what we did was we looked at what the needs were. We knew what we couldn't do to be, um, to be safe. Our learning center uh, couldn't be used as it was. But what we looked at were the needs of the families. And food and hygiene was a major um, need. So we've become uh, a food distribution uh, center and with Crystal's help. Yeah, uh, she's there right alongside of us and we distribute food to families, toilet paper, hygiene items. Um, we also go through the neighborhood and make sure families are okay. And, and you know, and it's transitioning. It, when it first started, um, toilet paper was the, the, main the big issue. main yeah. thing. And our families did not have the resources nor the ability to go looking around for it. So there were many families that were completely out. And Renee would get up at six in the morning and go and go to different stores and wait in line to get uh, the toilet paper. And we go right to the homes. And, you know, um, I know it affected everybody. But um, one, to just to give you an idea of how hard it impacted the families, we walked up to a home and they have uh, a mom and dad and there are five kids. And one of the girls, uh, Jocelyn, when she saw that we had toilet paper, she started crying and then no. tears of joy and jumping <laughs> up and down. And she said they were cutting up their t-shirts because they had nothing else to, to use. Yeah. And... I mean, that's a, that's a horrifying thought. I mean, it, it, that a, a teenage girl has to d deal with that. But the joy that she had in something as simple as toilet paper. So those of you who have been dropping off toilet paper um, and, and baby wipes and diapers at our drop-off centers at Urban Grange and West Salem Ace Hardware, thank you. Because it's really making an impact in lives. Every time we give out food, we include at least two rolls to, what was it, five rolls of yeah. toilet paper yeah. to the family. So um, it, it, it's pretty impressive. So we're distributing food. Uh, we're also ch doing safety checks going through the neighborhood and checking on the families, uh, especially the elderly, and making sure, are they okay? What do they need? And then we're working to resource that and get that to them. We're offering children online tutoring. The majority of our kiddos... Their families are not equipped to help them. I mean, I'm struggling being a teacher, as you've heard. I've been fired. <laughs> um, right. So now put yourself in a place where you're the parent and you didn't even graduate from high school. How are you going to help your child? So we've set up online tutoring um, for the kids that want that. Uh, another need that we saw was our college kids that were home from, their, from college but still needed to continue their education didn't have the ability to because they're in uh, different situations. No internet in their apartment. Uh, really crowded and noisy in their apartment. No computer in their apartment. So we set up um, different rooms in the learning center as a clean workspace. And they know that they're supposed to clean up after themselves. And by that, you know, the smell of Lysol is wolfing through <laughs> our learning center all the time. Um, so they have a place to continue their education. And then we've opened up the laundry at our learning center so that families can come and they can do their laundry. And, and that might seem, uh, you know, like, oh, big deal. Well, our families spend 75 to $125 a month on laundry. Wow. Anything we can do to help right now, we're doing. Yeah. And we're just looking for more things to do. Um, we just, we're making sure we make contact with the families in a safe manner so that they know they're safe. So that they know that we're still there. We're not going away. We still care about them. And we're meeting more and more people this last yeah, uh, Monday. True. We had a lot of new faces showing up and so excited that mm -hmm. we had food and toilet paper. Right. Yeah, everyone loves free food <laughs> handed out. And so you're basically doing some of the same exact things that you've been doing. Uh, it just looks a little different. Exactly. We just pivoted. Yeah. So that's amazing. You mentioned you've had people giving to you the toilet paper and the baby wipes, which have been a huge blessing because you don't have all the funds to go buy all of that. Uh, what are some other needs, ways that people can also keep giving to you or what's, what's the contact for that? Uh, well, there is a great need in uh, obviously in the, the things that we mentioned. Um, there also, we, we, we petitioned to become an emergency food pantry with Marion Polk Food Share. So that's a big help. 
but being an emergency food pantry, you're limited in what you can receive and give. We can't get meat, we can't right. get dairy, we can't get those things which are vital and important. So uh, we, we need funding to help us yeah. buy meat and eggs and butter and, and uh, cheese and milk for the families and include that um, along with the produce that Crystal goes and picks up for us. Right. So that's a huge need. Um, and anything that can be done to help us with that is, is amazing. And it, it's making an impact in lives. Yeah. So drop it off he, at Life Church, drop, Urban Grange, I know, is a drop off site for you straight to the Nuestra Casa. Yeah. Um, first of all, financial uh, support is huge because then we can go and we can buy in bulk and we can save money. So that is huge. We have a relationship for, with Food for All and we're working with them right now to allow us to buy um, beef and pork directly from a wholesaler. So that's a huge help. Urban Grange down on Edgewater, huge supporter. They donate coffee, they donate pastries yes. um, that we get to give to the families, which is awesome. But they also, and they donate toilet paper too, um, but it's a drop-off location. So you can take non-perishable items and they'll take care of that. West Salem Ace Hardware is the exact same thing. They will, uh, they will accept um, support and donations from us, but non-perishable. Um, if you want to drop off to the Learning Center, you'd need to reach out to us. So we make sure that one of us is there because we're out and about a lot, uh, sourcing items that families need, checking on the kiddos and the families. Perfect, yes. So with all of that, we wanna give, we wanna support you, we wanna pray for you, the people that, there are some people right now I know that are watching that can't really get out, but how can they just be praying for you? Well, first of all, prayers are powerful um, and we appreciate all the prayers. You, you know, you'd mentioned, um, how is it at home? Well, Renee and I are both working more than full time. So trying to uh, do that and then be teachers is quite a bit of a challenge. So prayer for, uh, a, you know, God's calming angels to be in our home <laughs> uh, for wisdom and navigating all of these things. It's been quite a while since I did math yes. and all those other things. And, right. you know, so that would be good. Uh, wisdom and protection. We're on the front lines. We're we're in the neighborhoods. We're checking on the people. We're doing everything we can to be safe. But just protection over um, over Renee and I and Crystal, who's there, and and the other volunteers. That would be uh, a great thing. God's provision to be poured out, but mostly that we become invisible. Yeah. We want to be invisible. We don't want people to see us. We want people to see God. We want people to see Jesus' love poured out onto them. So us having the ability to do that would be an amazing thing. That's so great. I love that. Just becoming Jesus to them, uh, to your friends, to your neighbors, to everyone you encounter. Uh, we definitely want to pray for you. Uh, but before I do, is there any other awesome testimonies that you've had recently that you can think of? Well, you know, when we talk about pivoting, um, I, I did. I just thought of when I went, oh, I should have said that. So thank <laughs> good, you. Good. Holy Spirit's yeah. involved here. <laughs> right. That's a good thing. Um, so every year we do a big Easter party, and we don't do an Easter egg hunt. Um, hopefully I don't offend anybody by this, but I don't like Easter egg hunts because I see kids sad crying because they didn't get the special egg, they didn't get all the eggs, they didn't get any eggs. So what we've done is we've always gone and boiled eggs, a lot of eggs, thousands of eggs. And the kiddos come in and we transform a cafeteria at Walker on a Saturday and they get to decorate eggs, which is something that very, very few of our kids do at home. And then we, uh, we give them little bags with Easter candy and, and uh, we give them the New Testament, little New Testament and graphic Bibles and things like that. But then we go and we tell the Easter story using resurrection eggs. That's and okay. Crystal's helped and she's yeah. interpreted, <laughs> um, which is a good thing because... No bueno. Um, <laughs> anyway, so this year we weren't able to have that party, but what we decided, we were still going to go forward, and we gave them eggs. Yep. And, and something else that's kind of cool, the kids get to take home food, which is another reason I like doing it, because they make the eggs, they get to take them home, and that's food for their families. So that's important. Anyway, um, so we gave them the eggs with instructions, boil these eggs before you dye them. And we gave them vinegar, and we gave them candy, and we gave them the, the same little New Testaments, and we did all of that. And a number of the families started sending us photographs. And then our hearts were totally touched because we started getting messages from kids and, and parents saying, 
we loved doing this at home, but we missed the story of Jesus. And I'd say that's my highlight of this whole quarantine yeah. thing <laughs> is that because you never know the impact you have. And that was pretty cool. Definitely. They remember that. They remember the story and they want to do it. They'll be excited for it next year. <laughs> that's so great. Let me just pray for you, for Dream thank Center, you. for you and Renee and Caleb. God, we just thank you for what you're doing, that it is uh, this blessing uh, that this can be a blessing in disguise, that uh, Craig as ministry, the Salem Dream Center, um, that people walk up and receive, well, they would just won't even see uh, people, they'll see Jesus. They'll see you, they'll receive you, they'll be touched by you, God, that it'll go into their families and their homes, that they will know you as their Savior, that they will um, continue to remember the Easter story of your resurrection, um, God, that they will just be provided for, that you'll provide for every home, that no one will go without food, that no one will go uh, without toilet paper or the needs that they have. Uh, God, we just thank you for what you're doing, that it'll continue to be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you so you. much. So our last but not least, we are going to have an interview with um, all. We're flying all the way to Wymas, Mexico to visit our missionaries, Bethany and Brandon Baird, along with Chantel Bradshaw. So the, we know the Bairds and Chantel have been uh, doing the uh, King's Kids uh, Children's Home uh, there and uh, Bethany and Brandon became the directors this last fall. Chantel joined them around Christmas time and uh, to help them out. And so they are doing a fabulous job, not only uh, helping 13 other children, but five of their own plus house parents. It is a 24/7, 365 job. So just basically what you do, times it by five and add. 20 children. So it's a lot, and they are amazing people, um, but we're going to hear from them today of how everything is going down in Mexico uh, with the coronavirus going on right now, what we can do to be supporting them. So we're going to show that video to you right now. All right, so we have Bethany and Brandon Baird and Chantel Bradshaw with us today. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Mexico. <laughs> How are you guys? Doing good. It's getting a little yeah. warm down here. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind being in, in a cooler area. <laughs> I'm doing just fine. <laughs> She's adjusted really well to the weather. <laughs> what is happening there? We want to hear all of the cool testimonies of God's great things happening right where you are. Um, we, we've actually been having a real special time this last few days. We've been staying here with all of our kids at, at King's Kids. And, um, and it's been really great because we've been able to see a lot of growth in the kids. We haven't been around them for about the last month and a half because of COVID and the restrictions that we have here in Mexico. Um, and so we've seen them mostly for a distance, from a distance. And, um, when you see when you see every day what's going on, you aren't able to see as much of a change. Um, but those last few days we've been here, and we have been able to see such a beautiful change that's been happening in these kids since we took over now almost seven months ago. Um, and it it's just really cool the way they're reacting, the smiles on their faces, the hugs that we got to give them after a month and a half. Uh, no yeah. hugs for a month, and you see them all the time. <laughs> it was it's been really really cool, really beautiful being here um we've we've had a lot of uh projects that have not fully come to completion yet but um we've had a couple that have but we've made a lot of strides a lot of progress um uh when we when we first got here the electrical uh for the entire place was um was was not to code not to standards and uh i can say right now that everything outside the buildings everything external is uh is completely to code uh, which is a is a major, major thing. Um, <laughs> we've now had a, a, a full roof put on, um, the uh, large classroom for the school. The inside's still not finished, but we have got the outside completely finalized. Um, <clears throat> we've also got brand new ACs in, in um, all of the buildings that will hopefully lower our uh, energy consumption drastically. Uh, There's 15 new ACs in all, so that was a big, uh, big praise report. Um, and, and the one thing that I'm super, super proud of 
is uh, we've been able to get to a point where I can say that the, the tool shed is, is, is finished. Um, we have uh, a whole set of working tools. Uh, we have a workbench. Uh, we, we, we can now host teams and uh, actually give them the tools that they need to help get some of this work done yeah um of course we could always use more in those kind of realms but um <laughs> but really it's it's uh it's amazing um what we've been able to accomplish in this last few months uh property wise it is the most beautiful room on the property <laughs> the most organized and absolutely up to up to code how but, it should be <laughs> you know we've also um especially during this time of quarantine we have seen an extra abundance of food being given to us yeah. Um, there's, there's a family here that just kind of took it upon themselves to feed San Carlos and Wymas, it seems. And, um, it, we got 400 pounds of vegetables delivered to us a couple weeks ago. And, um, now they're wanting to help with more food items. And even the government even is helping right now with giving us milk and cookies. And, um, so that's been another thing that's been really cool. And I just want to say one more thing is that we... Are seeing a huge, um, pro huge progress in our kids with their education, and mm -hmm. so much of that goes to Life Church and everything that you guys have done. All of the sponsors. We'll talk a little bit more about the sponsorship program, um, but a lot of them are from you guys, and you're helping these kids be in school, helping them learn how to read and write. We have kids that haven't ever been in school before, and it's their first year in school, and now they know how to read and write. Mm -hmm. And so, thank you. Yeah. you guys everything everything that yeah. you've done continue to do you guys have been such a blessing to us thank you guys that's beautiful yeah. we know that your main ministry is the kids but obviously this looks totally different now with this curveball thrown at you so what does ministry exactly look like right now it's a great question <laughs> mexico has a lot of restrictions that they put on us right now for example we can't we can't go on walks with the children, we can't leave the property with them for any reason. Um, the only reason that we're allowed to leave at all is because we're essential workers. Um, there's only supposed to be one person in a vehicle at a time. If there are more than one, they have to be in the back seat. It's really bizarre kind of restriction. <laughs> it don't totally make sense. <laughs> um, I'm trying to abide by that. We also have less staff right now because a lot of our employees aren't essential workers. And so we've had to let, we're, we're continuing to pay them. Um, but they're in their homes, and um, so we have a lot more work to do right now, a lot more work. We um, have kind of just had to step up the game, but we have an incredible team. We're so thankful for everyone that's here doing this with us right now. Um, less staff, more work, but we're able to continue educating the kids, and we're doing it, all of it from here. We have an assistant. Our assistant has been amazing. He's headed up to school. He's a He's a teacher and our intern, and the two of them have just really done an incredible job with these kids, teaching them, and then other house parents and people as helping out sometimes. And uh, uh, So I just want to add to that, um, <laughs> you know, with the COVID situation, they have given pretty much all the same restrictions that Oregon has. So there is actually no, no public schooling, no anything going on, but because of the fact that we are in this special school program, um, we were able to actually do kind of like a homeschooling system with all of our kids. And so we're kind of doing school on site, um, uh, just like they were really doing before, but we're taking it on ourselves. And so before it was a whole team of uh, people for the school. Now, now we're doing it with, uh, with about a, a third of our, our staff, maybe a little bit more are gone. <laughs> so. A lot. Yeah. yeah, just, well, taking a break for now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but another, another thing that, um, has been continuing on is we have a psychologist that works with us oh. and he has been working hand in hand with these kids well not hand in hand we actually have to send <laughs> up mask and mask with these kids <laughs> anybody that comes from outside has to abide by um, a two two meter rule two six oh, foot gosh. rule uh and has to wear masks and that includes our our staff that come on site every single day so so he uh he meets with them uh weekly but yeah, we have to we have to abide by quite, quite a bit of rules. <laughs> anyway, but we're seeing just really great progress with the kids and working with him and um, the spiritual aspect also um, has been really, really cool because he's able to take the psychological side of things and and apply it biblically and really bring Jesus into it and healing from the spirit into it. So that's 
That's Huge. been really awesome because it's even it's a traumatic experience. Quarantine, the effects of trauma on children during mm-hmm. quarantine. So the yeah. fact that we can continue bringing in that and bringing the health and life, and that it's not just something that they process after quarantine, but in the midst yeah. of it, they can look at it and grow and be healthy. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. So one other incredible aspect of what kind of our lives are looking at right now is. Um, we have had Chantel here now with us since the end of December. Hi, that's me. And I know you miss her <laughs> so much. Thanks for letting us steal her. But we're very thankful she's with us in Mexico and not in Salem right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's the number one reason why. <laughs> okay, so during the last few months, honestly, for Brandon and I, it's been one of the hardest seasons of our life. Okay. Um, but also incredible. Like it's it's been hard. There's been a lot of just challenges over challenges after challenge. And um, Chantel has come in the perfect timing because for one, she's a good friend of ours. Um, but she brings an an aspect of her walk with Jesus, and it enters the room when she comes. And we have been so blessed by that and so encouraged. And um, as well as she's just willing to do anything and everything. And she's learning Spanish and she's doing amazing. And sometimes we make fun of her, which is also great because it brings a little more joy into our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> makes everybody happy. <laughs> she, <At her> expense. <laughs> she right now is actually being a mom, full-time mom to our five children <laughs> because we are here with the kids at King's Kids. We can't bring our children because of the restrictions. And so... Her and our assistant are being mom and dad <laughs> for the week. Um, and yeah, it's it's just been amazing. She's also helping with this, us with admin work and um, even just helping us trying to figure out how to manage a team and how to, how to run this place and being really encouraging and sometimes calling us on our, our stuff when we should be doing things that we <laughs> Maybe that's mostly the thing. She's like, Bethany, stop it, Bethany. <laughs> But it's good, and um, yeah. yeah, yeah, we know you have multiple jobs, Chantel. But I know one of them you had this huge heart going down there to obviously serve Bethany and Brandon. But there was also a guest house. Like, where is that right now? Well, first off, I just need to pay them really quick <laughs> for that little commercial. But no. um, yeah, the guest house. Mm-hmm. Um, so the original plan was when people come down that we have a beautiful place. Um, when people come to serve and spend time here. And um, it's also just been such a blessing to our house parents in this moment. So right now when the house parents go on break, they have a beautiful, which they were before, but now that's really honed in on that. And it's still been such a blessing. And Life Church is a huge part of that. We didn't see how, just how important actually having this guest house is, even with quarantine, even with no visitors coming in, it has still played such a huge role in blessing the house parents and blessing the team. So, yeah. yeah. The, the only, the only uh, uh, place that we had for our house parents to take a break, because one, one of our house parents is from far south Mexico, and the other ones uh, had to move out of their apartment. No one had a, had a place to stay when they took breaks. And so the only option we had was our, our personal home uh, that we had to vacate for that time. And so now we can actually really focus on building our family because of, of, of that house. So it, it really has become a key, which uh, I, didn't, I didn't see at the beginning. So it's, it's, it's really been a blessing. The other aspect of that, if you, if, for those that haven't worked with kids that have gone through trauma, when you're working with this type of ch- these type of children, you have to have a break. You, we even need breaks from our own biological children, right? <laughs> but <laughs> but it, it's that much more when you're working with the with the dynamics of children that we're working with. And so for the for our house parents to have a break every single month, and it's it's absolutely necessary that they don't burn out, that they can really be as healthy as possible for these kids. So that's a huge huge blessing to us. Yeah, they absolutely. can relax, they can veg out, they can be at peace. Yeah, yeah. to provide that is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. With all of that, you obviously have needs, um, prayer requests that people want to be able to pray for you guys. What's your biggest need right now? Um, I, I would say, you know, just to start off, our, our absolute biggest need has, has been finances from the start of, of the orphanage. Um, right now, we're currently at about um, one-fifth, one-sixth of our, of our uh, total 
committed monthly um, uh, like sponsorships, I guess, for, for the orphanage. Um, uh, we're about one fifth of our goal, including the sponsorships for the children. Um, and so we've, we've really been getting by through, through this time on excess giving from, from last year from one-time donations. And, um, and so that's a, that's a big thing. But the biggest focus of that specifically is I wanted to talk about um, the kids' sponsorships. Um, we are only seven away from covering three sponsors for every single child. And so uh, that is a huge, huge deal. Um, and, and a lot of that has been because of Life Church. We've gotten, I think, the majority of our sponsorships through you guys. And so thank you guys so much. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're only seven away, so that's seven uh, people at $40 a month. Uh, we'll completely cover the, the, um, the cost for our kids' schooling, uh, cost for their extracurricular activities, and then, uh, and then just a little bit extra. We kind of, you know, it rolls into uh, the needs of everything else after that. But it's, that, that will... Uh, really help get us going. Uh, the next thing is we really wanted to uh, focus on covering uh, the the wages for our house parents. Um, it's one of our largest costs, um, but it's also one of the highest needs that we have. They are absolutely essential, and we need three sets of house parents at the moment. We only have two, um, but if we could get a fifteen hundred dollar uh, commitment per month, it would cover all three house parents. Uh, that includes their wages and their um, all the additional you know, uh, taxes and everything for them. Uh, and so, you know, if you break that down, you're looking 15 people on hundred dollars a month. Uh, we can get uh, the, the house parents wages completely covered. Uh, and, and like I said, that would, that would really bring up, a, a, you know, help us in the financial department. Uh, uh, of course, with, with prayer, we, we could use so much prayer and all of this. We, we have gotten so many attacks over this last seven months. I can't even count, you know, there's, there's been days where we've had like five, six, seven major things happen um, in a day where, you know, I, I had three cars break down in one day uh, while, we were, while, while we were battling and dealing with some other uh, big obstacles. And, uh, you know, it, it's true, you know, when, when we are doing something for the kingdom, when we're taking back land, the, the devil, Satan, will always, will always attack us in, in the weak spots. And, you know, um, that's one of those things, you know, vehicles, finances, um, and prayer, your guys' prayer, um, the spiritual covering will, will, will really fix that, you know, so, so that, that's a, a huge thing, if you guys can keep us in prayer as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely, I uh, do want to pray for you guys, so, um, you know what, I'm just going to pray now, because, unless, is there anything else you wanted to say? I miss you, Life Church. Life. <laughs> yeah. we, we miss you too. Yeah. We, we love you guys, and um, thank you for taking the time to to connect with us and see how we're doing. You guys can always, um, if you guys have more questions about finances, you guys have more questions about what's going on that we're not covering, and and our social media stuff, you know, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, those kind of things. If we're not covering it there, we're not covering our newsletter. Um, you can always uh, just just call us. Um, our phones are pretty much available at all times, um, and so we'd love to hear from you. Uh, ask us, ask us anything you want. And we did have someone ask about sending supplies because they really had a heart to send us supplies. But right now, with delivery and quarantine and everything, it really is we can actually go and get. There's a Walmart here. There's a Sam's Club. Um, if finances do come in for an art project or for something like that, we can actually end up going to go get it. So some people, they want to give, they want to send, but actually, you know, like, hey, we can let you know, like, we can actually go get some of those things. So another way to get. Yeah. That's perfect. Thanks, Crystal. Yeah. And I know you guys were planning to come up here. Brandon was going to come visit in April, and that didn't happen. So, I mean, I know you guys want to come in the summertime, praying that all of this, this yeah. is here, and you guys can still come and see us in person. We'll give you hugs. So, um, real legit hugs. Yeah. <laughs> the long squeezes. I'm, I'm tired of air hugs. I know. I need a Jody hug. If you know Jody, you just need a Jody hug. You know? <laughs> God, we just thank you right now in Jesus' name. We just bless Bethany, Brandon, Chantel, all of these children that are there at King's Kids. 
Uh, Lord, you are with them. You walk through those grounds. You touch each child spiritually, mentally, emotionally. God, we just thank you that you're doing a great work. Thank you for the amazing provision of food and um, electrics, getting all fixed and things um, provided for. God, you are the good, good daddy, and you watch over all of your children. And God, I just come against these um, spiritual attacks from the enemy that are trying to break down cars and break down relationships and break down um, and just bring in confusion and dishonor. And God, we just pray for um, a spiritual covering of peace, a spiritual covering um, and that will just uh, bring a restoration and hope again to the kids, to the to the house parents, Lord, I just um, pray for financial blessings that will come in, in, in miraculous ways from people that don't even know um, who they are. Um, God, just people um, from our from Salem connected all the way through to Wyoming, Mexico. God, we just um, pray for um, an, an amazing blessing of, of materials, of food, of finances that can cover um, the needs in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Love you, Thank Love you, you too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See you later. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us today for our Missions Fair 2020. Uh, it will hopefully look a little different next year. Uh, but I did want to say for all of those of you who would like to support financially, uh, just go to our lifechurchsalem.com, go to the giving part, uh, just type in or click the other uh, option and type in the name of the person that you would like to directly give to. That's the best way for them to receive. Um, for those of you that, who can't give financially right now, I know that uh, there are other ways, you know, send cards, send prayers. Uh, they so much appreciate it. And uh, so we just wanted to be able to give you a chance today to hear what's going around in Salem and all over the world. I hope it was an encouragement to all of you today that things are happening and we all get to be a part of it. I just wanted to leave you today with a verse in Romans uh, 8. It says, yet even in the midst of these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors and has demonstrated his love in our glorious victory over everything. So now I live with this confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. Bless you all. Love you all. We'll see you soon. <laughs>